Uh, hi, my name is Charles Anderson, and I'm going to present Lab 4. So the purpose of this lab is to predict the behavior of circuits containing resistors in series in parallel and use a multimeter to measure actual values of conventional current potential differences and examine the behavior of omnic resistors and capacitors. So for models and fundamental principles, so here we can see a circuit, an example of the circuit that we'll use through the um, simulation. And then here are some basic uh, concepts that we're going to have to know. So as a main result of the lab, we were able to uh, calculate the potential difference loss over the entire circuit. And then we were able to figure out a curve um, of the, the linearization of the voltage on the right here for the RC circuit. So main physics concepts, we're going to have to learn how to use node loop rule, the loop rule, delta V across the resistor of equals IR, and then how resistors work in series in parallel. For the models of this experiment, we use the online simulator, as you can see on the left, and um, essentially we're model modeling some circuits, as can be seen by the circuit diagram on the right here to analyze our data. Um, so there's some for reasons for using this specific model was this is a good simulation of how circuits work. Um, and we're assuming that the tools were given were accurate and there were no outside factors in the simulation. And this allowed us to create or create our conclusions like that graph that we formed on the previous slide from our simulation and form conclusions. Um, so for physics errors, uh, obviously we are simplifying the ex experiment. There's almost no R value in the simulation. So uh, because it's just like a there's no error and the real world is not so perfect as this experiment. So system and surroundings, as you can see here, we essentially use batteries, wires, and ammeter, resistors and a voltmeter, which you will eventually see on another slide. And this kind of is our experimental setup. So um, we use the simulation from FET, as you can see on the right here. And then we created a circuit and measured the potential difference over the circuit, as you can see from this image here, um, as well as the, the amps flowing through the circuit through this image over here. Um, and then we were able to model the system with two batteries and a 47 ohm resistor and a 100 ohm resistor to measure the amperage flowing through the system and the potential difference. And we learned that the sum of the potential difference over the entire system was equal to zero. And from this image on the right here, we can see how the potential difference changed in the specific circuit. So it went up to three as you were at the battery, and then you had a drop across each resistor until the potential difference was zero. So this kind of demonstrates the loop rule as we were talking about earlier. For this next experiment, uh, we, were, we set up uh, a circuit with a capacitor and we charged up the capacitor and then we discharged the capacitor. And what we learned is the greater the resistance of the light bulb, the longer it takes for the capacitor to charge up and dissipate. Um, and then the final, and then the final thing that we were looking at specifically was how long this entire thing took to occur. And then we linearized the graph here. And as we can see here, um, the RC value matches up, which is the slope of the graph with what we had initially predicted. So we know that our experiment was correct. Now, there's some similarities between a computational model and an experimental model. A lot of the assumptions that we made in the experimental model, like if we were to actually do this experiment, transition to this computational model. But if we were to conduct this experiment in real life, we would run into issues such as environmental conditions impacting the experiment. And there are several sources of error in this experiment. For example, for one of the parts of the RC experiment, we had to use a timer. And there's obviously some issues with using your phone as a timer to record data. So you have some human error involved. Now I'm going to answer the what if questions. So if you're doing this lab in real life, um, an ampermeter would have some resistance flying through the circuit. So as a result, your values would not be perfect, but a higher end ampermeter would redu reduce the error that you might receive from a system like this. And if we were doing this experiment in real life and used a real battery instead of a real capacitor charge, or instead of uh, what simulation that we had, uh, one issue that we would soon run into is the fact that we might accidentally just start a fire with no resistor. And this was kind of seen in the experiment here. It would also be more difficult to see when the capacitor is completely charged up. Yeah, yeah and uh, thank you for listening.